Final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 14714 in the name of Michael Russell on St Andrew's Day. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I call on Mike Russell to open the debate. Mr Russell, you have seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to speak about the continuing aspiration of many, though clearly not many Tories and Liberals, to secure St Andrew's Day as a full public holiday for Scotland. Um, I'm grateful to MSPs across the Chamber have signed the motion. It's a topic that attracts support across the constitutional divide. And indeed, it attracts support across the world. It was good to see Google celebrating St Andrew's Day yesterday with a, a Google Doodle, complete with a saltire and a winking Nessie. Um, we've got some way to go, though, to be able to hear in this building the happy St Andrew's Day greetings uh, as much as we heard the happy Thanksgiving greetings, which were heard on every floor of the members' block here on Thursday, our American interns taking one of their national days overseas with goodwill and celebration. Now, some people were a little alienated yesterday when they saw on Facebook that they were using a Romanian flag to celebrate St Andrew's Day. But St Andrew is the patron saint of Romania, uh, which in 2012 decided to declare a full public holiday on this day on the 30th of November. St Andrew is, of course, and I don't need to remind you, presiding officer, also the patron saint of fishmongers, gout, singers, sore throats, spinsters, maidens, old maids and women wishing to become mothers. But St Andrew has only been the patron saint of Romania since 1997. Scotland can claim him uh, as far back as 1320 uh, with the Declaration of Arbroath. And the association with the Saltire, the cross on which St Andrew was crucified, goes back even further, probably to 832 in the Battle of Arthur Stainford, when the Saltire appeared to the Pictish king. The relics of St Andrew were uh, brought by St Regulus to St Andrews, which he described as at the very ends of the earth. But the, the association has stuck. St Andrew is, of course, also the patron saint of Russia, Greece, Cyprus, Poland, Ukraine, Bulgaria, uh, the ecumenical patriarchate of Constantinople, San Andreas Island, Colombia, and Barbados. And Barbados also celebrates St Andrew's Day as a full public holiday. Some of the others mark it in different ways, usually because there are other public holidays around the same time. For example, in Russia, the 27th of November is a public holiday called Naval Infantry Day. It marks the raising of the first naval regiment by Peter the Great. Scotland needs to promote itself with vigour and with unity. And public holidays do that if properly sold abroad. Amazingly, the first official St Patrick's Day festival was only held as recently in Dublin as 1996. Now it's worldwide. It acts as a strong promoter of Irishness. And a holiday north and south of the border is observed. Scotland has very few national public holidays compared to other countries, though it does have a strong tradition of local holidays. Lanimers in Lanark, the Braw Lads in Gala Shields, mm -hmm. Savin in Inverness, Victoria Day in five different locations in Scotland, including Edinburgh, and as that marks Queen Victoria's birthday, it is hardly of contemporary relevance. And Dennis Canavan brought the issue of a, a national holiday on St Andrew's Day to this chamber uh, first of all. His St Andrew's Day Bank Holiday Scotland Act was approved unanimously in 2007. And he deserves great credit for that. And his aim was to, and it's in the bill, to have a national holiday on or around St Andrew's Day so that the people of Scotland would have the opportunity to celebrate their patron saint their national identity, their cultural diversity, and their membership of the international community. And that was a good aim then, and it's a good aim now. And Dennis went on to establish a St Andrew's Day campaign committee, still meeting, with a distinguished membership, including the Saltire Society, the St Andrew's Society, the STUC, local government, churches, faith groups, and a number of distinguished supporters, including Lord McFarlane of Bears Den, Sir Tom Farmer, Elaine C. Smith, and Craig Brown. And that committee remains firmly of the view that this Parliament, although it does not have the power to oblige all employers to give their employees a day off, could and should do more to take forward the idea. Now, the Scottish Government and the Parliament mark the day as a holiday, but only a handful of local authorities do so. And the Campaign Committee wants to see the commitment to the holiday enshrined in all manifestos for the 2016 election. 
And it wants action, it's fair to say, and I hope the Minister will reflect this in his closing remarks, to fulfil the pledge in the Scottish Government manifesto in 2011 to assess the success of the 2014 St Andrews Day that in the last year of homecoming before making further proposals. I hope those proposals will be on their way. Because all the party leaders committed themselves to the day as one, and I quote again, of national celebration for the people of Scotland in a declaration signed on the 29th of November 2011. And now we need to make it happen. The day would be good for us as friends, neighbours and fellow citizens. It would build a sense of solidarity amongst us. It can encourage cultural expression. It might also give us a more rational and less materialistic alternative to Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And it can also celebrate our internationalism, links to other countries marking the day and to other days being celebrated at this time of the year. Now, this debate isn't one that will end with a, a vote or a decision, but I hope the message from it, supporting Dennis Canavan and his St. Andrews Day Committee, will be heard. The committee wants to see action, and so does Scotland. The committee has recommended not only a high-level commitment from the parties and politicians, but a range of practical things, including a, a national event to switch on Christmas lights, uh, the pr projection of a floodlit saltire on prominent Scottish landmarks, St Andrew's Day concerts, broadcasting across the world involving the diaspora, a national school competition, a St Andrew's Day lecture, more involvement of young people. And increasingly, community groups, schools and young people are coming together uh, to celebrate this day. And of course, political parties are doing it too. On Saturday night, I was at the St Andrews Night dinner in Oban, organised by the Oban and Lorne branch of the SNP. Over 200 people attended, listening to speeches and song and raised money for an excellent cause, my re-election. Now, I hope that the, the day and the <laughs> celebrations can continue to spread, and they would do so best if we give a lead from here. So one final suggestion. I hope the government will think about including a school holiday in the national circular on the number of days in which schools have to, uh, people, pupils have to attend schools. A single day won't make much difference to a child's education, but that single day could make a lot of difference to the child's sense of community and positive solidarity, and it can make a lot of difference to the future of the nation. We want for our country, no matter our constitutional stance, unity, purpose, generosity, and a place in the world. Those are things a national day can give us. So let's go about creating the national day that we need and want. Many thanks. Now call on Anne McTaggart to be followed by Christine Graham. Four minute speeches are thereby, please. Thank you, President Officer. Firstly, I would like to thank Michael Russell for the opportunity to speak in this debate today and congratulate him on getting this far or with it. As we all know, St Andrew's Day is not just another day and it's not just another holiday. It is a special celebration of Scotland's rich history and culture. It is a chance to celebrate our heritage. We trace back our lineage and revive our traditional foods, dances and performances in an effort to remember the cultural values upon which our nation was built. We reflect on how these traditions exist in society today and remind ourselves of our roots. Every year on November the 30th, we take the time to appreciate all that is great about Scotland. We showcase our food, our music and our dance and show the world that Scotland is proud of its heritage and of its communities. In many cities across the country, St. Andrew's, St Andrew's Day is celebrated with large parties, great musical entertainment and traditional Cayley dancing, and also for fundraisers for Mr. Michael Russell. <laughs> in my own region of Glasgow, the entire city holds a, an annual celebration in George Square with a traditional Scottish-themed programme, including live Cayley bands, dancing and children's activities. St Andrew's Day is an important moment for all of our communities, both large and small. St Andrew has been known as the patron of, Saint of Scotland since the, the, at least the 9th century, and his crucifixion is the inspiration for our flag that still flies high in Scotland today. The legend of a saltire dates back to as far as 832 AD. As Reverend 
seen in Scotland. St Andrew was the national symbol that Scotland needed to motivate the country as we became a nation many years ago. And in 2015, we celebrate the strength that St Andrew has inspired in us to this very day. The saltire which symbolises this inspiration is rightfully displayed in our towns, our communities, every year on November the 30th a showing of great support for this nation. I would also like to mention that even Google, as Mr Russell had mentioned earlier, has shown its support for St Andrew's Day yesterday by displaying the St Andrew's flag on its home page. While St Andrew was obviously impacted greatly on Scotland, it also was essential to note that St Andrew's Day celebrations are held all across the world as Scots and Scots abroad observe this national holiday. St Andrew's Day allows Scots to share our heritage and our culture with people all over the world. And in conclusion, presiding officer, when St Andrew's Day is celebrated on a global scale, it should be recognised. As St Andrew's Day becomes a representation of Scotland on the world scene, everyone should have the opportunity to participate in the celebrations across the country and allow us to continue to show the world what a truly great nation we are. Many thanks. I now call on Christine Graham to be followed by Cameron McCannon. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too congratulate Mike Russell on securing this debate celebrating our national identity. The increase in the celebration of St Andrew's Day is undoubtedly due in part to this Parliament reconvening some 16 years ago, and not the least to Den Dennis Canavan's Act, we already heard of, which raised the profile of St Andrew's Day, or not to anywhere near the status of St Patrick's Day, as has been noted, or of Burns Night. However, there have been improvements over the years. St Andrew's, as others have said, gave us a salt out in 832 AD at Athelstainford, the birth of that flag. Scotland came about. It was also used in the nation's coinage when it was introduced by David I in the 13th century. It has an ancient and honourable lineage, as has the Scottish nation. Flags are the most powerful statements of nationhood. They are the beating heart of a nation. As the unseen and unexpected skirl of the bagpipes in a foreign land draws our curiosity, so the flag, wherever flown, says, here is a part of Scotland. There are Scottish people here. Now, the member has suggested that the salt tower be projected across public buildings. He can start with Edinburgh Castle. Because on St Andrew's Day in our capital city, there is no St Andrew's flag, no salt tower in prominent position on the castle. As always, it defers to the Union flag. Why not? Why not the salt tower? There is a false argument that it does so because the castle is an army garrison. It is not. It ceased to be a garrison in 1920, and the army is now there largely in a ceremonial capacity. If one were looking for a conspiracy, one might say that the garrison argument provides a fig leaf or a flag leaf for the supremacy of the Union flag. Yet, when the army wants to recruit our young men and women to fight in wars, it uses the salt tire. And when the body bags come home, it is to the piper's lament and the weighted coffin is draped in the salt tower. Yes, the union has its uses for the salt tower. You see, neither the Ministry of Defence nor Historic Scotland owns the castle. Under the terms of the Scotland Act 1998, the Government of Scotland owns it. Our ministers own it. Historic Scotland is simply a custodian and the army is a tenant. I suggest that it's time that we enforce the terms of that tenancy for the life of me. Now, I don't understand why this majority SNP government with its ministers owning the castle does not insist the salt tower flies there in pole position, not just on the 30th of November, but every day and flies alone. I therefore congratulate Scottish Borders Council, which does fly the salt tower and nothing else but the salt tower, 365 days of the year. And is it not extraordinary that Scotland, as one of the most ancient nations in Europe, we have been a nation since the 11th century, does not really celebrate its nationhood on St Andrew's Day? 
It is also extraordinary that although there are salt air societies in Boston and elsewhere in the world, our salt air society had to fight to fly Scotland's flag. It is symbols of nationhood, such as our patron saint and the flag that is symbolic of his crucifixion that have carried the hearts and hopes of Scots in good and bad, from the confrontations on football pitches to those on battlefields. How dare Alex Salmon wave the salt out for Andy Murray's victory? We should know our place. Andy wins, he's British, loses, and he's Scottish. There's some truth in that. Now, of course, there's money to be made in tourism opportunities. To lead from St Andrew's Day to a winter festival will be no bad thing, and I would welcome it. However, far more important for me is a symbolic reminder that we are the Scottish people, whether or not we were born here, as many of us, including myself and Mike Russell, were not. That's what we should be proud of. Thanks so much. I now call on Cameron Buchanan, after which I move the Minister for the closing speech. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It's that time of year again to celebrate St Andrew's Day, and I'm pleased to have this opportunity to join in the many celebrations, even if I am the lone Tory here. Although the story of St Andrew is well known to some, my historical thunder has been sold by Mike Russell. I'm just delighted that uh, Stuart Stevenson isn't here to add to it. I think it is worth the raising awareness of the origins of our celebration and the international influence of the saint himself. Having said this, so much of St Andrew's Day is about getting into the spirit. So I'm very happy, and spirit in both senses of the word. So I'm very happy to have the chance here to plug some of the events and special occasions held in my local area to mark this day. It is said that St Andrews became identified with Scotland when King Angus of the Picts, with the support of the Scots, won at the Battle of AD 832 over King Athelstane of the Northumberlands, fought in the present-day East Lothian. Before the battle, King Angus dreamt of St Andrew bearing his saltire cross, then while fighting Angus saw a cross of white clouds against a blue sky, hence the colours. The Picts and the Scots went on to defeat the Northumbrians and the saltire became their flag and, of course, St Andrew their saint. Although we have our own story, as we've heard from uh, everybody else, the great man is also the patron saint in Greece, Russia, Romania, and even as far as feel as Barbados, which you didn't say. So I wonder perhaps if there's some scope for sharing celebration stories and ideas to yet more vibrancy to our own festivities. He's, of course, the patron of fishermen, which is particularly appropriate given our long-established reputation as a seafaring nation, the eminence of our seafood and the status as one of the largest fishing nations in Europe. At the moment, it is difficult to mention fishing without some comments about the European Union's policies coming up. But I think I'll just leave that to one side for today and focus instead on the celebrations here at home that some locals have got stuck into. Historic Environment Scotland gave away tickets to some of our best heritage attractions as part of this year's St Andrew's Day celebrations to be used over the weekend of the 28th and 29th of November. And this included Edinburgh Castle, Craig Miller Castle, the Lithgow Palace in the Lothian region, which I hope families, enthusiasts and all interested members of the public took advantage of. People could also enjoy a free offering of music, comedy, dance and literature in St Andrew's Square, including Dean Owens and the Whiskey Hearts. Most importantly, I'm sure there'll be a huge array of private parties and celebrations that each may bring family and friends together in their own way. Calling presiding officer, I do hope that we'll continue to share the festivities around St Andrew's Day and I share Mr Russell's uh, enthusiasm for making it a school holiday as well. As with many celebrations, it's important to remember the day's origins, as well as appreciating its wider connections. Having said that, the best thing that everyone can do is to enjoy the day in their own way, and the more choices they have, the better. Thank you. Thanks very much. I will now move the Minister for the closing speech. Minister, seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'm delighted to respond to what has been an interesting and informative de debate. I would like to thank Michael Russell for bringing it to the Chamber. Also, thank him for his history and geography lesson of the, uh, around St Andrews. And, um, we'll, we'll have to look at the record to see whether Barbados was initially there or not. I, I thought it was. But, um, also, um, thanks to Anne McTaggart for talking about the inspiration of the saltire, the legend of, the, of, of a saltire, um, which, as Christine Graham um, mentioned, is so important to the, to the Scottish nation, um, the, the symbol of, of that flag flying. Um, thanks to Cameron for adding in a, a plug for Scotland's um, 
uh, seafood. Um, obviously, there is important talks ongoing, and we're, we're trying to make sure that we get the best deal for that particular industry, which is a growing industry here in Scotland and, and um, worth more year on year. And I, th I think the potential is, is something that we all agree on, and we, we, we hope we can support it um, going forward. Presiding officer, it was eight years ago when the first SNP government initiated the concept of Scotland's winter festivals to boost the national and international celebration of St Andrew's Day, Hogmanay and Burns Night and to showcase the very many reasons why Scotland should be seen as a year-round visitor destination. These key cultural dates were always celebrated, but what the Winter Festival programme helps to do is to harness their significant collective potential by showcasing um, across the winter season the exciting range of events and activities on offer that promote and celebrate our distinct traditions to the people of Scotland and our visitors and those with an affinity for Scotland from across the world. Scotland's Winter Festival celebrates and showcases our unique cultural and creativity at home and across the globe, boosting tourism and, visitor, and the visitor economy and in engaging communities and enhancing our national pride. Since their introduction, the winter festivals have gone from strength to strength. This year, the Cabinet Secretary for Culture and External Affairs announced a record £390,000 to support 21 key cultural events as part of the 2015 2016 programme, some of which uh, Cameron Buchanan mentioned. £75,000 of that fund has been used to expand the reach of events across Scotland, and I'm delighted that now 15 local authorities areas are now involved in the new programme activity taking place this year in Aberdeen, Dundee, East Ayrshire and Falkirk. The celebration on and around St Andrew's Day is a key element of the Winter Festival, and these celebrations are growing year on year. This year, Ten events, Aberdeen, Argyll and Butte, Edinburgh, East Lothian, Dundee, Fife, Glasgow and Perth and Kinross have all shared um, a total of £141,000 of funding support for, for their winter festivals. Partners across the country um, offered free and discounted entry to attractions throughout the St Andrew's Day um, Out programme. St Andrew's Day Out programme, which I think was included in Edinburgh Castle, as um, Mr Buchanan mentioned. While data for 2015 is still being collated, um, to give you a sense of the growing impact of the celebrations of our national day, um, I'd like to share some of the, the information from 2014. So Edinburgh's St Andrew's Day celebrations attracted over 43,000 people and over 12,000 people attended a new event to mark St Andrew's Day in St Andrew's itself. 127 organisations signed up to be St Andrew's Day out partners, offering free and discounted entry to their attractions. Historic Scotland received over 37,000 applications for their annual ticket giveaway to mark St Andrew's Day, increasing from 26,000 in 2013. Um, Scotland-themed St Andrew's Day materials were provided to 20 British embassies and also for events which were held in Portugal, Estonia, Bangladesh, the USA and Canada. So you can see the reach of our national day is, is, is going w w much wider. But it's also um, about Scotland and St Andrew's Day and the Winter Festivals has also provided a fantastic vehicle to enhance community engagement and empowerment. To that end, we were delighted to provide Bemis Scotland with um, a funding contribution of £46,000 this year to help further engage Scotland's multicultural communities in the year 2015 um, of Food and Drink and the 2015-16 Winter Festivals. This programme has been a great success, delivering over 65 events across the country and engaging thousands of people from multicultural communities, their friends and their neighbours. Going forward, we'll work with Bemis Scotland and other partners to explore how we can build further on our achievements in 2015. Now, Mike, Michael Russell uh, raised the St Andrew's Day Campaign Committee, chaired by Dennis Canavan, which has been formed to explore opportunities to further boost the celebration of St Andrew's Day. Over the last few months, the committee has worked with the Scottish Government to help enhance the St Andrew's Day celebration. And they too have been, um, as Mr Russell said, keen to see St Andrew's Day designated as a national holiday. And the Scottish Government officials um, have confirmed the concept of a national holiday has no legal basis in, in the UK. So the St Andrew's Day Bank Holiday Scotland 2007 um, modified the banking and 
Financial Dealings Act 1971 to make St Andrew's Day a bank holiday in Scotland and any holidays which might be regarded as national or public um, are in fact bank holidays. That being the case, the focus of our ongoing activities have been to work collectively to further embed the tradition of St Andrew's Day celebrations across the country and across the world through events and promotional activities that build on our significant success to date and engaging people in the meaning of St Andrew's Day. The St Andrew's Day Campaign Committee has come up with a number of ideas to help achieve this. For example, you may have been aware of the attractions across Scotland were lit uh, blue last night to mark St Andrew's Day. This was an idea initiated by the committee and developed by the Scottish Government with support from organisations like the Association of Scottish Visitor Attractions and others. Going forward, we would hoped this initiative grows, bringing St Andrew's Day and Scotland's unique buildings and landscapes to a world worldwide audience. Another suggestion from the committee was an interfaith service to mark St Andrew's Day and again we were delighted um, to support this with £1,500 of funding contributing to support an interfaith service which took place at Old Cathcart Church in Glasgow on Sunday which was led by the Reverend Neil Gilbraith. Um, an interfaith service for St Andrew's Day helpfully complements the activities I described earlier um, being led by Bemis Scotland and we hope to explore opportunities with partners to further grow this model in the future. From today's debate it is clear that there is support to boost the celebration of St Andrew's Day. We support that wholeheartedly. The Scottish Government is working to help boost the celebration on a number of fronts and we, as well as our particular role in terms of international government and international engage engagements. However, the responsibility for engagement in St Andrew's Day does not rest with any body and the key to success is going to be partnership. So I'd encourage members to look to their, their own constituencies and local partners and see how they can further add to the celebrations. With your help and in partnership with organisations and communities across Scotland, it's clear that we can grow the celebration of St Andrew's Day enhancing the wider celebration of the Winter Festival, boost our, our economy and our international profile with the engagement and cohesion and empowerment for our com communities. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I now close this meeting of Parliament.